back to Change Ed. I am your host, Andrew Kuhn, project consultant for Montgomery County Intermediate Unit. And here with me, the newly promoted co-host of our world-renowned show is... Patrice Semichek, also out of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit. And what is your title, Patrice Semichek, also out of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit? I think it's project consultant, I think. I appreciate the confidence that you're exuding... <laughs> On this show already, our listeners are overwhelmed yep, by the choices right. that we've made. Mistakes have been made. This is your 15-minute podcast where we talk about all things education and the changes that are happening all around us. Some of them that we are part of and we're excited for, others that are happening to us. So as we ebb and flow and make these shifts and changes, we are talking about them. We are super excited to have here with us today, I was giving a drum roll moment there, so that everybody thought it was going to be Tony Mer Rubito, who is not here. <laughs> but not fired. He's not fired, but he's off somewhere. I think it's probably a, doing esports things. Yeah, it's like an esports Comic Con thing somewhere somewhere else. So he's not here, and we're super thrilled to have here instead our guest, our friend, <laughs> Jason Zimmerman from IU13, Lancaster, Lebanon, to be exact. Jason, welcome. Thanks so much. It's great to be here. We are super happy to have you. Could you maybe, you know, our fans, which actually spans the entire globe, not just the Pennsylvania. I would assume. I would right. assume. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I, you know, we are in Lancaster, Lebanon, IU. What do you do there? What's your role? So technically, I think my role is teaching and learning consultant for STEM. Uh, so I just started in January of 2023. So it hasn't even been a year yet in this position, even though I feel like maybe it feels like five years, but <laughs> yeah. uh, that's probably just from all the steels work that's happening. Uh, but before that, I was working as a classroom teacher at Fritz Elementary School, teaching fourth and fifth grade, primarily math, science, and social studies. And I was there for 11 years. Nice. You know, I heard you say our favorite S word, steels. Steels. It's here. Booyah. Well, uh, coming, I guess. It's not almost, here. almost, almost here. And we, you know, we talk about steals a lot, but actually I thought a great, good segue into talking with you is, is, you know, are you familiar with the podcast world? Tell us about your podcast experience. What are you listening to? What do you like? I think I listen to podcasts every single day. So as a consultant, I'm driving around Lancaster and Lebanon County quite a bit. So sometimes I have a little bit of a drive up to maybe an hour one way. So I listen to podcasts pretty much every time I'm driving. So uh, right now, some of my favorites are Smartless. Love that one. That's a good one. Uh, those guys are great. I love their banter back and forth at the beginning. I think that's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I also listen to The Office Ladies because I'm a huge, huge fan of um, The Office the TV show. Watch it a lot of times. And um, and I also listen to the Gilded Age podcast now because nice. I love that show on Max. Nice. So. You know, I got to be honest, Jason, I'm a little... Uh, a little surprised because, you know, before we started recording, you were telling me how huge of a fan you are of Change Ed. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot. I am on a podcast right now. Um, so, of course, this one, I listen to it throughout the day. It's just playing, going through my head at all oh, times. On repeat. Yeah. On repeat, yeah. yeah. So that's how yeah. we got to nine last month. <laughs> <laughs> you kept yes. downloading it on all your other devices. Correct. This is already a train wreck, so we're so glad to have you here. <laughs> You know, one of the things uh, that I do want to mention uh, for you specifically, uh, knowing that you're doing the steels work, as are so many IU consultants across the state, uh, we're working together. But we we had the pl the privilege of attending the SAS Institute, and you were one of the presenters there, and gave a really great presentation and, and, and session on three-dimensional learning, uh, kind of all things steels. One of the things that really resonated with me was you shared a, I guess, a quote or a, a, a inspirational thought from was it BC Bruce mm -hmm. that said that community uh, community as curriculum and I wonder if you can kind of unpack that a little bit and share with us kind of where did you where did you get that and where you know what was your thought process behind that yeah so I'm currently working on my doctorate from Vanderbilt University and some of the things that we do is looking at 
learning and its design. So looking at designing learning for different communities and what our community looks like. And so we came across this article from BC Bruce, this research from 2018 that really focuses on looking at learning as an ecosystem. Mm. So taking the approach of school shouldn't be the place where learning is only happening. And if we view a school as the place where that occurs and not looking at life as the place where learning is happen, happening, we're really missing the point. And so this whole research goes around the idea of we need to view the school as a part of the community and like using the community as the education space and not just holding learning within four walls. I love that so much. That is such a really different way of approaching education. I think that is what um, Remake Learning was attempting to do out of Pittsburgh. The whole movement before it became those days over the um, spring. I think that it ties back to all the stuff we've been talking about, like project-based learning and finding phenomena everywhere. So I think it's a really great way of meshing all of that together. I think I need to read some of that. One of the things that resonated with with me while you were just now talking about it was we talk a lot in education about silos, Mm -hmm. right? And especially as we continue on in education, uh, you start out where all together all the time for all learning and there's this magical teacher who can do everything. Uh, So when you said elementary, I'm like, okay, you know, yes, I'm I'm impressed. (laughs) Uh, But then as you move up, we we find ourselves in these silos where we're, we're learning specific content from a specific person. But this is, for me, is the next level. Like, let's step back even broader and say education itself can be in the silo where like, it's like going to a job. I'm going to my education and then I'm going to come back. But what I'm hearing you say is that it's not just isolated to a specific time or a specific spot. It's a, it, this is a an endeavor that is all the time. Yeah, I think that's kind of the beauty of the steel standards in general. And kind of the intention is what I have really been learning that to break down some of those walls and to look at not just saying, oh, now here are science standards Mm -hmm. and also tech and engineering and environmental literacy in three different camps, but looking at how do we actually pull them together so that we're not just creating these even more structured silos and developing those more, but looking at how do we pull these things in so that when we look at maybe a STEM course that's in a school, like is it actually a STEM course or is it really just a technology course mm. or is it really just a science course yeah. or are we looking at true integration of different content areas? And I think that's the true intention behind these standards and the NGSS movement in, in general. Well, look, sir, uh, I'm frustrated right now because I have one job and it's to create the transitions and you already transitioned into <laughs> SEALs without me doing it. All right. Well, uh, I'll, you know, do just you, take that over. Do you want to replace him? <laughs> right, yeah, okay. sure. So that it can be you, great. me, and Tony. This Wonderful. part is going to be cut Wonderful. out. No. Nope. So not it, being on the podcast. As the one who edits, it's staying. <laughs> <laughs> Agree to disagree. So uh, <laughs> one of the big things that I hear, and I, I want to tie in your elementary piece with this, I think think and it, it that I hear from all elementary teachers but also is a legitimate concern is time right it's this battle of time and now we're saying hey look uh, it's not just science but we're adding in it can be perceived that we're adding in these extra pieces so from your perspective how, how does that work out right like how does the math work out if, and, or if you go you know you're, you're, you're sitting down and talking to an elementary teacher and they're like every fifth Wednesday when the you know the moon is high then we can talk about science and and, and so what does that look like well first I would say for, for the most part the teachers I'm talking to, they want to make these changes and they're excited about it, especially in the elementary world. Like we come from this background of really focus on like pedagogy in general, focus on instructional strategies as a whole, focusing on classroom management, where a secondary is heavily focused on a specific content area. Mm -hmm. So this shift to, you know, using these amazing instructional practices like phenomena based learning is exciting. I think the first place where it starts is looking at the leadership within schools Mm -hmm. and saying, what time are we actually setting aside to tell our teachers that it's okay to stop a lesson in another subject area because we do need to dedicate very specific time that is like that we're not going to ever move away from it. And it can't be, you know, 
two forty five to three fifteen, but like buses are dismissed at two fifty five, right. and that's our science time. Like we need to have actual dedicated time for science. And I think that's would be an argument of a lot of elementary school teachers of like they want to teach science. They just don't know when they actually are supposed to do it. I think, yes. And as an elementary person too, I unfortunately learned more about project-based learning after I left the classroom. And I'm not saying this is project-based learning, but it kind of is. And the idea of integration of ELA and math into the science, I think if going back to leadership, had conversations with leaders that would allow teachers to maybe deviate from their prescribed curriculum once in a while to read about the phenomena that they're experiencing in science and do some of the math concepts using science materials, we could go significantly farther. And I think that would be um, really beneficial for the collective if we were able to have some more of those conversations as well. I completely agree. Before the pandemic, I was actually co-teaching in a project-based learning classroom for five years. And um, we had a group of, it was two classes worth of kids. So it it was 40 plus kids that we had. We had this large room and it was a fourth and fifth grade class combined. And we focused uh, really on how do you integrate all of our subject areas and then have some sort of high level project that incorporates almost every single subject area. What we actually found is when we did that, we actually had a lot of time left over to explore these like passion projects with our kids. And it was the most amazing thing. I feel like those are the kids that I am still in contact with their families even years later because it was such a meaningful experience Mm -hmm. and they learned so much from that. And it just shows that when you do integrate meaningfully, Mm -hmm. it actually does take less time than what we really think. Right. And I'm assuming there was more transfer um, of the learning because they were able to apply it immediately in other subject areas as opposed to just one. And they had like a meaning behind why are we learning measurement right now? And it's like it related to our project and they needed to learn those skills. Mm -hmm. And so then they were able to learn about it and we could have small group math sessions, but then they knew they were going to apply those skills like at the end of the day or whenever we had those project pieces tied into our schedule. And that's where I see a lot of the work we're doing with steels being very similar in that mm-hmm. way, because we are talking about phenomena and things like that and making those connections across because you have to be able to explore the phenomena, but also we don't, we can't see everything with our eyes every time. So we have to read about it. We have to write about it and do all of the, those things. Um, so I think these could be easily connected. And in the conversations that we're having with people out in corporate America, you know, we ask them, okay, well, what time do you have your employees science? What time do they math? Right. There's not that separation. So right. as you're kind of saying, like, this is an opportunity for kind of systems thinking of like what is best, uh, what works best. But, you know, we, we are living in an amazing time, era, and age that people are not using the separation thought process, right? Like we have cell phones that can do all these things, not because they brought in all these different people. It was like, let's solve the problem, right? right. Like what's next? What's next for all of this creation and things that we do? Well, Jason, uh, we, we have so much more that we could talk about. And I see what you did there to make sure you got invited back, which is <laughs> um, not going to happen. So... Uh, <laughs> totally <laughs> happening. You're out. He's in. Okay. I already got your job description in an email during this podcast. <laughs> So um, I already, I already applied. That so. was AI generated. Yeah. <laughs> it's not real. Totally um, hired. <laughs> but we want to give you uh, just any closing thoughts or, I, uh, you know, something that you'd like to say or, or really hit home in this conversation. I always think back to, you know, if you're a teacher, if you're an administrator, whatever level you're looking at is just thinking about one small thing that you can do to make a change immediately so that you can start seeing those small progressions. I think It's great to have large strategic plans Mm -hmm. and big goals, but we always need to remember that there needs to be something to kind of take away right away. And what's something I can just do tomorrow or today before the end of the day that's doable so we can see those small wins. That's awesome. Well said, but I can't leave you with the final thought. So (laughs) I will say it, which is uh, we cannot wait to see you all on the flip side. We'll see you till next time. 